it all the time. We're set. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. We have returned from our executive session. I'd like to have a motion to deny the grievance as presented tonight and authorize the superintendent and board chair to respond. So moved. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Okay, 5.0, adjustments to the agenda. I do have one, 10.0, the student representative report will not be happening tonight. Um, we will pick up again in September. Are there any other adjustments? Yes, uh, we have three additional appointments. Wentworth School, fourth grade classroom teacher. Eight Corners School, kindergarten teacher. Wentworth School, math support teacher. Great, thank you. All right, 6.0, are there any public comments on the agenda items tonight? Seeing none, 7.0, the superintendent's report. Thank you. Well, it's great to be here. It's, it's just been a wonderful transition. Um, I spent a lot of time with the administrative staff, two days, and really got to know them. I've been in every facility, and Todd took me on a wonderful tour. It took most of the day, and that was great to see where the schools are at, what the projects are going on in the schools. Um, in addition to that, I attended the secretary meeting and had a wonderful opportunity to meet with them and talk to them. And I applauded them because they're the first person in every school or building where a parent might go in and see a friendly face. So it was great to meet those people. And uh, things are really running well. I'm just very pleased to be here. I had a great four weeks of uh, summer, um, and I feel rested and ready to go. And I really look forward to working with you people and the community. And just like parents and anybody out there, if you ever want to stop in, I'd love to meet you, greet you. I've had a wonderful opportunity to meet a lot of the people in the town office, and uh, I would like to conti continue that and extend it to the larger school community. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, hey, that's me. Um, chair's report. A little sad that this is the last of the only monthly meetings coming to an end for the year. Um, but we did want to present the 2019-2020 goals that, as a board, we had collaboratively agreed upon. Um, so as I go through this, because I don't want it to just be a me thing, I'd ask that folks weigh in um, as we talk about the objectives and the goals. So the objective <coughs> for the first goal, promote and grow a district-wide culture of trust, transparency, and collaboration with the three goals of attaining high visibility and engagement in the schools to identify, assess, and address areas of strength and improvement, conduct an analysis of our budget process, policies and protocols at all levels, and identify areas of strengths and ideas for improvements, and support teachers and students in the continuous improvement cycle. The second goal is to establish a plan to address facilities and growth, specifically at our K-2 level, as we've talked about quite a bit and support a committee to assess facility needs that addresses our student growth. So those are the goals as laid out by the board. Do you wanna talk about how we came to those goals a little bit? I, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, we spent a few Saturdays together um, going through this in a retreat format and we worked through um, everything that we felt was really important we had, I wanna say, like six or seven long lists of things that really hit home to all of us. But when it came down to it, these were the two that spoke the loudest, I believe, for all of us. Um, and the smaller pieces all fit into these broader points. Anything anyone would wanna to add to that? I mean, I would just add, oh, my. Uh, I would just add that I I'm so thrilled to see through our conversations that assessment is here in the word assess. Um, assessment has its roots in basically just academic programming and looking at student learning outcomes and all of that, but it's really broadened across all levels of education to look at 
assessment and effectiveness, not just in the academic arena, but in the administrative arena, um, with processes and procedures and all that. So I'm just so thrilled that um, we're going to be spending some time making a goal of broadening assessment in our district. Um, I just would clarify that um, the Saturdays we met, I think it was two Saturdays, they were retreat meetings that we had, and mm -hmm. I think the, the one we um, did the most work um, with the goals was, was that the first Saturday in May, is that when we did that? I believe it was so. the I think second that, meeting. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was the second meeting that we had, and it was, I think it was the first Saturday in May when we had that at, at, in the Wentworth Commons, Learning Commons. I also, um, in terms of the the um, first goal under the first objective in terms of the visibility and engagement in the schools. I think, um, I think um, with our new superintendent, I think that might be a really good opportunity to, for us to maybe talk together as a board about um, whether or not we wanted to do some, um, some more formal events as well, of getting the community here and maybe having a, a meet and greet or, or um, you know, other mechanisms like that that we could allow people to come in and, and um, start um, asking questions and talking about what's going on in the schools. That's great. Yes. I don't remember if we talked about next steps at, at that retreat. I felt like we were on. Um, Although, I don't think your microphone is on. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. She's not plugged in. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't. I think um, my recollection was that the retreats we we pretty much used up all of our time. Did we come up with next steps for how we're going to implement the the goals and and the plan? I'm going to go back to the memory banks, and I'm getting older, so they're not as strong as they used to be. Um, I believe that this was the foundation for um, the review. Okay. To make sure that what we're laying out is being. Um, managed or supported um, from the superintendent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that as well. I think it was important to us all to um, have um, Superintendent Prince as part of that conversation as we started to plan um, how we were going to tackle these goals and objectives. Mm -hmm. So would we plan another retreat? Is that what we would do? We could do it as a retreat or we could also do that. I think that would be a great workshop, workshop. topic. Um, and now that we get back into normal schedules, the second business meeting includes that. I think that's a great chance for us to have that dialogue and start working through how we start going through those pieces if that worked for you. Okay. Good. Thank you. Good. All right. That's all that I have. Moving into committee reports, um, the policy committee will have our second readings on three policies later, um, but we did a lot of work on the social media policy and that is way larger than um, I think any of us had quite expected. It's gonna cover a lot of pieces, which is great. Um, pieces that we still are working through are relations with our booster groups, the system-wide code of conduct with the students, um, employee computer and internet usage, as well as a social media privacy. Um, we also have items on deck, our child re abuse reporting and administering medical marijuana. We need to address changes in the law so that we stay current with that. Um, and our next meeting is Monday, September 9th at 4.30 in the central office. Communications. Um, so uh, communications we met last week or the week before, um, we did a review of um, in general of our school year 1819 communications um, and then we also did a review of our um, this past budget cycles communications um, so I just put up there the uh, I don't know it's kind of like a calendar I guess it's like a timeline, timeline thank you um, the timeline that we the, that we based our budget communications off of so all of the ideas that we had um, we put it into the timeline, um, and then it was, at the time it was color coded as to whether it was uh, social media or print media website. Um, and then we went through, and um, once they were finished, we kind of grayed them out. Um, but anyway, we came to the conclusion that we are basically going to continue with everything <laughs> that we did. <laughs> um, we thought that. Um, 
of the new things that the budget newsletter was valuable because that was um, a tool for us to get a, a lot of information out to everybody um, in our school community. And, um, and we also came to the conclusion that um, the social media as time consuming as it is to make um, is probably also worthwhile <coughs> to continue only because there's only more and more people that are um, coming to our site and those things are shareable so it's kind of an, not well it's not easy but it's a quick way to get information out um, and then in terms of our overall communications we did look at um, our spotlight award that we just started last year and decided that um, we would continue with that for another year, um, if only because of all the positivity that it brings to the meetings and hopefully um, the way that it makes staff feel valued and by us. Um, and our next meeting is September 3rd at two o'clock. That was about it, do you guys, do we do anything else? No. Okay. Negotiations? Um, yeah. Um, we are, um, it's ongoing, we're still in negotiations with the Scarborough Educational Association um, to um, do the teacher's contract, and as I said in the past, it's a confidential process, and I, I can't share anything at this time. Okay, thank you. Long range planning. So this, so this slide might look really familiar, I apologize, I didn't come up with a new pretty slide. Uh, for tonight, but I just want to give a little bit of a, an update. So um, <clears throat> uh, the Eight Corners build-out is coming along. Um, if you've driven by the site lately, you notice that it's moving uh, along very well, and I know that Todd was reluctant to make promises about when it will be open in the new year, but it's looking earlier and earlier. Uh, the building actually has arrived on site, and um, I have heard some things that say it could be open as early as sometime in September, but there are no guarantees there. Um, we're always very cautious about, about setting those expectations, but um, I do want to take a moment just to recognize the, uh, the incredible amount of work, Herculean work, that's happening to get that up as quickly as it is. Um, the other thing I wanted to just talk about really quick, especially since one of the objectives that we just went over was to establish a plan to address facilities and growth in the K-2s, is just to give everyone a quick update about um, last meeting, I believe I mentioned, we had a, a conversation with the... Um, steering committee from the Wentworth build out that went very very well as I said last time we've been working to set up another meeting with the, with the chair in particular Paul Cazell and he's interested in meeting with us to, to, to talk about uh, their process more summer schedules are tough so it's been hard to get uh, something on the books but we're aiming uh, for the end of this month looking at the, actually the very last week of this month hopefully um, and and beyond that it'll be uh, kind of moving forward cautiously. There's a lot of other things happening in the community that may steer us, but the need is there and we will continue working toward that because it's something that I know this board values and as the chair of long range planning, it's on the very top of my list. Excellent. Thank you. Finance. So at our last meeting, um, I think we told you guys that we were gonna do, the finance meeting was gonna do a debrief on the budget process. Um, so we had that, and I've shared with you the full report via email, so you have it. Um, I just put some highlights up on the board of things that we, we thought went well, some things that we want to look into for next year. Um, uh, but those are just, you know, a small segment of sort of the page and a half. And, and Sandy, I don't know if I shared it with you at the time, but I will forward it on to you, or the link is in there to the full report. Um, but generally, I thought it, it was a really productive session. Um, it was with the three of us and Kate, um, and we talked a lot about sort of what we want to make sure we continue to do, um, such as the leadership council, the uh, sessions that we have that we thought were really productive, um, but also some things that we want to improve on. Uh, like I wasn't going to go through all of them, just because you guys have it in your email. Um, so following that, we had a meeting, a joint session with town council, and. Um, we had asked that they do the same thing so that they would go through and do a, a, a debrief on their own and then come with their takeaways. Um, I don't know that they actually did that in person, so what they presented to us, the, the link in this slide is a link to their slide deck. Um, is a link to their slide deck that we'll, you guys would be able to see sort of the bullet points that they put in there. I would say theirs were a much more sort of high level, um, whereas ours were like very specific to the school board process. Um, but some of the things that we agreed on was we want to do a review of the budget outreach meetings because I think there was uh, five of them this year and they were very 
poorly <coughs> attended um, compared to, to previous years. So we want to look at how we can maybe do a better job of getting engagement in the community. Um, we did agree that there was more civil community dialogue um, this budget cycle compared to past cycles, so that was a positive. Um, we all agreed that we need to establish different metrics for judging the budget, so there was consensus that just relying on the 3% increase the tax rate is not good enough, um, and so more on that in a minute. Um, we also agreed that we need to review the entirety of the budget cycle, both for the school board and the town council, because it seemed like, well, one, the, vo the second vote on the budget is after the, the ballots are even available. So, so the ballots become available before we actually even finally approve the budget, so that needs to be looked at. And then just the whole cycle, so the meetings, making sure that they're aligned so that it works for the superintendent and for the town manager to be have, getting information when they need it, and then also so that we're getting information when we need it to make decisions. Uh, so that's one thing that we want to look at. Um, and then we're focused on long-term planning and strategy when budgeting, so looking three, five years out, because we know that we're going to be in trouble when it comes to debt, um, and so that's something that the town council is going to take on. So out of that, um, session there was three con there was three workshops that we all agreed would happen as a follow-up one of them that the town council will run which is on the long-term debt planning um, so i don't know if that's scheduled yet, but that will be scheduled for probably september october and it's just the town council we can participate if we want but ultimately it's sort of their uh, remit uh, the second one is a, a joint session with go with the board of education on goal setting and budget schedule and that's going to happen on the 27th so um, right now, it's just for the, both the finance committees, but obviously anybody is, is welcome to come, and, and Sandy and Kate, um, we'd obviously want you guys there as well. Um, and really the point of that is for everyone to come to the table and say, Let, let's generate some new ideas for how we can do this, um, and then brainstorm and talk through, and then bring some options to the full town council and to the full board. Um, and we're really hoping and relying on your expertise from your past experience to say how we can do this different and, and better. Um, and as part of that conversation will also include how we partner, or, or if we partner, how we work with town council as we go through this process. So are we truly partners? And if so, what does that look like for them in terms of what meetings do they come to, what information do they need to have when they need to have it? Um, or are we really just coming to them at the end and saying this is what we need and they say yes or no? Can I, can I ask a, a question um, regarding um, the realities of the budget process and our budget policies that we have on the books? Because it's, it's my recollection that our policies don't necessarily align with the reality of the budget season. So I'm really I'm thinking that it might be a good idea. I know we have a lot on the docket in policy, but it would be a really good idea for us to start to look at our budget policies and partner up with the Finance Committee to to um, review and revise as appropriate. I think yep. that's great, Amy. We had kind of raised that flag at the committee level to mm -hmm. bring that to your attention, so. And I think great. most of the policies are around the schedule, like mm -hmm. the sequence of it, and so that'll be like when we review that right. schedule, that'll be a great sort of kickoff for the policy. Any deaths? No. April? Cool. Okay. Our liaison roles, town council. So um, really my only update for town council is that the town council is reviewing um, uh, some decisions being made around the new sports complex that is going into the downs. And I believe that this <coughs> would have huge implications for the schools and for the school community. Um, but because it's town council business, um, we have not necessarily had an active participatory role um, at those meetings. Um, and so I reached out to our town council liaison, Councillor Johnson, and suggested that the school have more involvement in these meetings. And so there is a joint town council meeting scheduled. Um, they are doing a two hour workshop as a town council and they have invited the school board to participate. Um, the date for that is Wednesday, August 28th from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Um, and I would just like to put that on everybody's radar, um, not just the school board's radar, but also the community. Okay. 
Leanne, I added um, an update, a liaison update, but I don't Sorry, know. just before you do that, I just oh, have one comment related to this. I think it might be important because we had to leave early before we got to public comment tonight during their meeting. I don't know if it's April or, or Leanne, but just to clarify with them what they want our role to be at that mm -hmm. workshop. Okay. Um, because they, they roughly outlined the agenda and nowhere in there did it mention anything from them. Other than inviting us. Other than inviting us, <laughs> yes. So that goes back That's to a great the, point, the partner point. Yep. Yeah, there is one online too. Yeah, I, I updated it in real time. I don't yeah, know if you have to update your computer. But, um, so uh, the, um, the Professional Development Redesign Committee, they are going to be meeting on Tuesday, this Tuesday, um, coming up the 20th, I think that is, from 8.30 to 2 in the Wentworth Learning Commons. The purpose of that meeting, they're going to review the data from this past year and then make recommendations for future staff development, um, primarily um, on the early release days. Um, they, um, this past year, um, from what I understand, um, collected a bunch of, of um, data from staff, you know, all staff, and they're going to review that data at that meeting and discuss it. Um, the committee is composed of about 22 people. Um, there are teachers, other staff members, um, administrators, and always there's also a school board chair. I'm going to um, attend at least part of that meeting as a board representative, and I'll have more information after. Thank you. Okay. All right, that should be the end of committee reports. 11.0, new business. Motion to accept the meeting minutes of July 11th, 2019 as written. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, I am not going to read the policies because we've went through them all um, pre previously. The discussion points that we had had have been updated into the policies. I'd like to take 11.2 and 11.3 as one because they really do belong together. And that would be a motion to approve the second reading of policy JJF student fees, along with JJFE, which is the exhibit of the student fees, as one motion to approve as written. So moved. So moved. Second. Any discussion? And for the folks at home who may not have caught the July meeting, um, what we are <coughs> removing is the parking fee at the high school, uh, which is a semester fee, two semester fee. Um, so we'll be taking that out and that will we'll ask to have that removed from the website um, and from the RevTrack ID. Um, all those in favor? And then 11.4, the second reading of policy BEDB, the agenda, motion to approve as written. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? I just want to say thank you to both Alicia and Amy for all of the hard work that you guys both put into this one. Um, I'm really excited that we have some formality around the process so that, you know, that can be a great legacy that we leave behind. So thank you. All right, all those in favor? Unanimous. We can do better than that as a legacy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 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 you know, baby steps. <laughs> like, like a K through three school. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving to 12.0 appointments. 12.1, middle school media specialist. Catherine Bava has been selected to fill this position due to a resignation. Ms. Bava earned her Bachelor of Arts in History from Lindenwood University and her Master in Library and Information Science from the University of Missouri. She has been working in school libraries in Missouri since 2013. Ms. Bava be placed on step seven of the massive scale per the collective bargaining unit. The recommendation is to appoint Catherine Bava as a middle school media specialist. So moved. Second, I actually have a question about, is this what we used to call a librarian at the middle school? Okay, that's what I thought, but I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? Unanimous. 12.2, Pleasant Hill School, first grade classroom teacher. Carly Hughes has been nominated to fill this new position. 
Ms. Hughes earned her Bachelor of Science degree in Health, Wellness, and Occupational Studies with a minor in Education from the University of New England. She completed her student teaching at Blue Point School, where she was also a long-term sub for four months in 2019. Ms. Hughes will be placed on step one of the bachelor scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Carly Hughes as Pleasant Hill School first grade classroom teacher. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Welcome. 12.3, a high school Spanish teacher. Maria Isabel Apelde has been chosen to fill this position due to a realignment. Mrs. Apelde received her bachelor degree in educational philosophy and science from the University of Distar in Spain. She has taught for 24 years in schools in Spain and Brazil, as well as five years in Maine. Most recently, she was a long-term sub Spanish substitute teacher at Scarborough High School. Mrs. Apelde will be placed on step six of the bachelor's scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Maria Isabel Apelde as a high school Spanish teacher. So moved. <clears throat> Second. All those in favor? You 12.4, a middle school bridge teacher. Kate Chapman has been selected to fill this position created by a reassignment. Ms. Chapman obtained her Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science from Drew University in Madison, New Jersey, and her Master's of Arts in Teaching from Manhattanville College in New York. She has taught second grade, third grade, and fifth grade in schools in both Virginia and Maine. Ms. Chapman will be placed on step 15 of the master's scale per the collective bargaining unit, unit agreement. Excuse me. The recommendation is to appoint Kate Chapman as the middle school bridge teacher. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, 12.5, middle school academic center teacher. Ashley Valentine has been chosen to fill this new position. <clears throat> Ms. Valentine received a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Moore College of Art and Design and a Master's in Teaching and Learning from the University of Southern Maine. She has been an, she has been an English teacher, language arts teacher, and a social studies teacher in Bath Middle School for four years. Ms. Valentine will be placed on step four of the master's scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Ashley Valentine as a middle school academic center teacher. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Great. 12.6, middle school special education teacher. William Ridge has been nominated to fill this position created by a resignation. Mr. Ridge earned his Bachelor's of Science degree from the University of Maine in Farmington and his Master's in Education from the University of New England. He has been a special ed teacher in Freeport since 2012. Mr. Ridge will be placed on step eight of the master's scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint William Ridge as a middle school special ed teacher. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. 12.8, the Wentworth School fourth grade classroom teacher. Gwendolyn Sensuri has been selected to fill this position created by a realignment. Mrs. Sensuri received her bachelor's degree from Hobart and William Smith Colleges and her Master's of Arts in Elementary Ed from the University of Phoenix. She began her teaching career as a preschool teacher in Hawaii in 2010, where she later taught in a first through third classroom. Most recent, recently, she has been a second grade teacher in South Portland. Mrs. Sissuri will be placed on step 11 of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Gwendolyn Sissuri as a Wentworth School fourth grade classroom teacher. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Okay, unanimous. 12.9, Eight Corners School Kindergarten Teacher. Elizabeth Halbig has been nominated to fill this new position. 
Ms. Helbig earned her bachelor's degree in elementary ed from the University of Maine in Farmington. She completed her student teaching at Young School in Saco this past spring. Ms. Helbig will be placed on step one of the bachelor's scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Elizabeth Helbig as an eighth, eight at eight corners school kindergarten teacher. So moved. Second. All those in favor? And unanimous. 12.10 Wentworth School math support teacher. Carla Griffin has been selected to fill this position created by a realignment. Ms. Griffin received a Bachelor of Science degree in biology from Northeastern University. She was an ed tech in Portland Public Schools for two years and has been an ed tech with Scarborough Schools since 2006. Ms. Griffin will be placed on step one of the bachelor's scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Carla Griffin as a Wentworth School math support teacher. So moved. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Welcome to everyone to the district. 12.11, one of my favorite things this time of year, our high school fall coaches. Please approve the high school fall coaches as presented. So moved. Second. All those in favor? And unanimous. Let the games begin. 12.12, Oak Hill Players Advisors. Please approve the Oak Hill Players as presented. So moved. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Again, unanimous. Excellent. <laughs> All right. May I have a motion to go into executive session? I actually have a question. Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, is the school calendar not on the agenda? Start dates? No. It was originally on the slides? No. Okay. Did you want to? Well, it's not on the agenda, but I, I did want to say that we have, because um, I've been hearing a lot of like, when do my kids start? Um, Kelly made a, a flyer that just reiterates when all the kids start, and it's up on our website. Great. Oh, and she also linked. Oh, okay. Okay, it'll be emailed tomorrow, and it's on our website. And she also linked, um, so we have like a interactive Google Calendar on our website, um, but underneath that now is a link to just the, the district year-round calendar, um, just for easier access for people. Great. Thank you for doing that. So um, I keep forgetting to do that. Um, so as a first year board member, I, I guess I was unfamiliar with how many appointments we have during the summer. And I just want to say as someone that works in the community college system and how difficult it is to recruit right now with the employment rate being so low, unemployment rate, rate or the employment rate was low, it be easier. Um, the unemployment rate being so low, I just think it's fantastic that by my count, so many, at least half of our new appointees have, have graduate degrees. And I think it's just so exciting to see us recruiting experienced and, and well-credentialed teachers to our district. So well done for everyone that was yeah. involved in recruiting those people. I want to reiterate that and just, you know, just acknowledge our administration and our, our philosophy in the district that we want to hire the best staff that we can and, and aren't afraid to hire experience. It's, it's going to cost more money, but that um, shouldn't be the reason for a hire. So the fact that we hire um, people with such advanced degrees is really commendable. Thanks. Thanks for the plug, Amy. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Thanks for the finance committee. <laughs> I know, we just sweat a little bit. It's okay. It's all good. The right thing to do. <laughs> and with that, a motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 405 6D for the purpose of discussing the teacher's contract not to return to public session. So moved. Second. All those in favor. Excellent. Thank you all. See you in a couple weeks. <laughs>